just at least call a meeting to order and we can go over a couple things okay. until Linda gets here. So All let's right. do that in uh, it's October 29th, Finance Committee meeting. Uh, we're going to go a little out of the agenda because we were supposed to talk about free cash, but David's going to tell us that we're going to do something a little different today. Cause okay. So we agreed that we would meet tonight and just make sure that the budget is in a stable orbit. You all made a recommendation on the annual town, uh, special town meeting budget based upon the presumption that we would have A, free cash, and B, a sufficient free cash to, to cover all the bases. Um, we are still working on that free cash certification. Uh, there's been a lot of activity between the collector's office and the accountant, and there's a lot of online submittals of information. Um, but we don't have an, we don't have free cash yet. We have a sense of the numbers, um, but we don't have that free cash final number and it has not been submitted to the Department of Revenue. Department of Revenue usually takes several days to turn free cash around. We're about a week away from town meeting. So with each passing hour, it seems increasingly more likely that we're not going to have free cash <coughs> certified by the time the gavel falls on at the special town meeting. It's a peculiarity of uh, municipal accounting that come July 1st of every year, whatever your free cash balance is, whatever your sewer reserves are, whatever your water reserves are, and whatever your Hadley Media reserves are, they all on paper go to zero, and they're not replenished until they're certified by the Department of Revenue. All right, so until we get that Department of Revenue uh, certification, we cannot treat any of those four sources of funds as being available for appropriation. A long time ago when I was in Deerfield, I took free cash that hadn't been certified and I got a very nasty letter from Department of Revenue saying, never ever do that again. Okay, so. We won't. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so over the weekend, as it became clear to me that we might be in this situation, I worked on a uh, on an alternative budget, which you have in front of you. Okay. Um, no free cash plan. Yeah, no free cash plan. So let's talk about the big picture because you know we should never make waste of a perfectly good crisis. You know, we're in a situation where we can actually accomplish something much bigger than balancing the budget. The budget is balanced, and we'll talk about how we did that. Uh, we think that we've done it in a responsible way, but we're looking for a vote eventually from you to, uh, that will make sure that everybody understands that the approach that we're taking is supported uh, and prudent. All right, so. There's no running around with our hairs on fire because the budget is balanced with all the add-ins and takeouts that we talked about that you voted on beforehand. But let's think about the bigger picture. All right, Hadley has two town me two town meetings <laughs> every year. They have an annual town meeting where we we appropriate all this money, which isn't quite balanced because we don't have free cash, we don't have enterprise funds, etc. And then we adjust everything at the special town meeting in the fall. Special town meeting is always a bit of a um, uh, scramble because we have to get the free cash certified and we have to hold the votes at the town meeting in enough time to generate the tax bills by December 31st of every year. Um, it puts a lot of strain on the organization. It takes time. It takes attention, it takes resources that could be used for other purposes. So it's a strain and it's a needless one. If we could go to a town meeting at the annual town meeting where we're balancing the budget <coughs> once with everything that we need to do all in, then there's no need for us to scramble like crazy 
to get the special town meeting done. So we think that we're in a place where we can do that this year. I almost was able to do it back in 2008. Um, our finances were sufficiently robust that I almost got there. And then we got the Great Recession and it was no longer within our reach. But now we're 10 years out from the Great Recession. Our revenues are very strong, uh, particularly in the form of motel rooms. We're now breaking a million dollars a year in revenue just from the 612 rooms in, in Hadley that you can rent out. Our restaurants are generating more than three and a half million dollars of revenue every single month. Wow. All right. We get a cut of that. That cut is about 30,000. No, <laughs> <Yeah, I, laughs> <laughs> that was really enthusiastic. Yeah. No, they're making that oh, money. Yeah. We so get a piece. <laughs> right. So we have a lot of prosperity, a lot of economic activity. 5,000 Hadley residents aren't dropping three and a half million dollars on restaurants every month. This is all this people's money, outside money coming in. So if we were to maximize our local receipts, then we're almost in a place where we can balance the budget. The weaknesses are OPEP and about $30,000, $35,000 that's left over. If we could fund OPEB with stabilization and the additional 35000 from stabilization with the promise that when we do certify the free cash, it will be available at the annual town meeting and that we replenish both those funds, then we have a balanced general fund budget. Similarly, in the enterprise funds, if we take from sewer impact fees about $220,000, we can balance sewer, water, and Hadley Media, again with the promise that when we certify the sewer reserves that we replenish what we took out of the sewer impact fund. Then we've got a balanced enterprise fund. I have a question. Sure. So we talked about because the sewer was having problems. Yeah. We talked about already taking from that sewer impact fee yeah. uh, for the debt. One hundred and thirty thousand eight hundred. And you have enough in it left in there to take care of this as well. Yes. Okay. We have about two hundred and fifty thousand. As in one time, dollars. temporary. Mm -hmm. This is one time. The only long-term solution, the only rational long-term solution for the sewer is to raise the rates. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to talk about that with the select board later on. But you have a balanced budget. You have an opportunity to go to one town meeting. Um, Don't we you have to, to do the one town meeting? Is that going to be have to be a vote? Town no, vote? No. Who decides that? that one would, town meeting? That would be the uh, select, select board, board and uh, finance committee together. We're only required, we have the annual town meeting. The special town meeting in the fall is um, initiated annually by the select board. It's nothing that we're, the town is required to do. Yeah. And then sometimes there's other special town meetings during the year. That's what makes it <laughs> special. Would that save a lot of money? It would, well, think Well, you're about not talking about not having the meeting, are you? Well, think or you're not doing the budget at that meeting. You're not doing the budget at that meeting. Oh, I thought we were talking about not having it. Well, I was talking about not having oh. it because I, I was the administrator for Deerfield for 10 years and we had one town meeting per year. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, when things came up that really needed to be addressed, we would have a very short special town meeting. Mm -hmm. But um, it is possible with proper planning to do one and done. Mm -hmm. When I was in Beckett, we had one town meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's select board meetings all the time to take care of other miscellaneous. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there might be some things I, I think we'll continue to talk about it. Maybe uh, we'd be increasing the Finance Committee's reserve fund or something, mm -hmm. knowing that we are going to have a larger oh. stretch mm -hmm. to before 
rethinking things. Mm -hmm. We just there might be some little band aids we can yeah. put in, little escapes along the way that would make it easier for the town to get through it. But um, we, we we see that there are some real advantages of of it, and this is the first opportunity that we've had where we could really go into town meeting in the spring with some good free cash. We've been going into free cash or into town meeting, mm -hmm. having spent all of our free cash in the fall. So we've never been able to get ahead mm -hmm. of ourselves. We can't quite balance that year's budget, but we'll fix it in the fall. Mm -hmm. So this is our chance because we do expect higher than normal free cash. We know we've got a good amount of free cash. It's just not accessible to us without being certified. So we know we're going to have a bit more so we can use that additional amount to make that leap in our mm -hmm. process and still take care of any of of everything. So what we have is a funding issue right now. We don't have a problem with the budget. It's a, it's a good budget. Some adjustments have mm -hmm. been made. Um, no one's going to get cut because we didn't have certified free cash if we follow this this plan um, to find the alternate funding and fix that funding in the spring out of the free cash. And that's where the extra free cash will come in handy because we will then use that balance the, this year's budget, we'll bring that money back. I mean, we'll have balanced it, but we'll have taken out of stabilization to do that. So we'll take it and we'll put back into stabilization, we'll put back into sewer impact, and then we'll have enough to go forward to bridge that gap in for the fiscal 21 budget too. And then we're done. We won't be balancing next year's budget at annual town meeting. So I have a few questions. Waiting to go back and then fall and fix it up. So when the free cash comes in, say comes in uh, two weeks after, you have to wait all the way to town meeting to change it? Unless we had another special town no, meeting. No, but the town yes. meeting is who can give. Once we take out yes, a stabilization, we can't put it back. No, without a town meeting vote. Okay. We, we did actually so, play play with that concept. If you're going towards, could we do it and then and then replenish it when we get it certified? And, and we had that talk today with... Um, uh, with Dan Zidonic, et cetera, and I don't think we can't use, we can't in any way spend any money that we don't af have certified yet. So what do you do, so you're talking six months, what do you do with that money that's not certified, it just sits in? You yeah, invest it. Yeah, yeah. You invest it. So the, say the OPEB, do you have to, when, I mean, can we wait six months on that and not and take we, out a stabilization? Sure. We talked about that, too, and let me uh, tell you my thoughts on that. The way we have been putting the money into um, OPEB is in stages during the year. So we get the advantage of the dollar cost averaging. We put it, and we don't wait at some point and just, boom, fund it. Let's call it to us about 270000 We don't take, I, I don't do it in one day. Mm -hmm. So we do, I do 50000 at a time every six weeks or so throughout the year. I haven't actually started yet. I don't usually start in the fall because they're a little tighter for cash in the fall. I usually start it right away in January and we do it over five months and that is a better way to put the money in. We don't know where, where our, you know, where, if we do it in the spring, if we wait and make the vote in the spring to fund it out of free cash, that gives, um, then I really just have six weeks in the year and is virtually making a, a lump sum investment into it. So I would prefer that we have, now I'm not actually going to, because we are going to have the money in our funds, in fact we already have it, we just don't have it certified, I don't actually have to go do a, a, a withdrawal from the stabilization fund. I'm not really going to take it out, I'm really going to leave it there because we have money to work with in the meantime then we, uh, we need an official way to have directed real money to these purposes. So we'll go in and we'll vote to have it out of stabilization and um, most likely that money will sit right there and we'll, we'll fix it in the spring and we'll move the money back in out of free cash and go forward from there. So I, I think uh, we went back and forth and, and that's why I, I was suggesting that if we're going to do this rather than risk it not coming back that I try to work it so that we could sort of have it contingent. And, when the, and then when this cash is certified, we'll put it back in. Um, we can't do that, it has to be by town meeting vote. But the other part of that is um, that, oh, where was I going with that? Um, 
lost my train of thought. If you if we did defer it to the funding yeah, open, the vote, yes, then, yes, then you'd only have two months. Right, and what we're what the way <coughs> we uh, we need to kind of get everyone to commit to putting it back in the spring. That's so we that, don't risk it not going yeah. back. So the finance committee would take a vote before town meeting or at town meeting. The select board would make a, a you know take a vote that this is our intention that we're going to do, and we will present in presenting this budget and. Um, if, if you were presenting it and saying that when we're going to be funding it with 300,000 out of stabilization on the understanding that or our commitment is or the intention of everyone here and we want town meeting on board too we're going to put that money back in the spring the, um, the money that we took for and I, I think we did I just don't remember the stabilization last time we took out for OPEB and we, we did not um, do it this we, we did take it out and we had to remove it from the funds and we did not put, put it, it back, back. Correct. So, I don't want to do that again. Once, once that isn't enough. So we, we took from that, it, and we never put it back. We why, didn't why put it back. It wasn't that? in the plan to put it back. No. Um, it was sort of on that back burner wish list, but we had other commitments for it. This year, with the amount of free cash we think is going to become, end up being certified, we think we can play that both ways the way we didn't have before, because we were trying to, I think it was the fire department we were there was a lot that we were put, but there's there's other people that. that don't care that we put keep putting money into free cash and they don't I mean stabilization mm -hmm. and I and I keep I, I don't want to think we should take out a stabilization especially if there's a fear of not putting it back I mean I don't mind the paperwork mm -hmm. kind of thing that you're saying mm -hmm. well because a lot of it is just like well we just have to show it on paperwork because right. we well, right. that, that's why we're asking for a vote that's from it. the yeah. finance committee we're going to be talking to the financial place. management team tomorrow about this yeah. and we're going to be meeting with the select board and if we can get all three groups to agree that this is the way to go then uh, yeah. you know i think that's as good a guarantee as we can, it's we can get yeah. yes yeah. On, on the one hand one of the thing i want to say about on one hand yes you're risking stabilization and coming out and not going back by not doing it, we're risking OPEB. Yeah. And OPEB is actually a better investment than stabilization. If we were to choose, have to choose between the two, where are we going to park this money for the best investment for the town? OPEB is the better investment because it is uh, chipping away at our long term, uh, mm -hmm. that our, our, our liability in that account. Uh, we're able to uh, invest it oh, some more aggressively. We, uh, well, we can do more long-term investments because we're not taking that money out for a few decades. Um, so we just have, we're going to get more for our money in OPEP. If we were going to put one at risk, I would prefer to put stabilization. I would prefer neither because I don't want to do that again. That's why I'd like to see sort of a strong, not slip this through, a strong voted commitment from the boards that this is this is our intention on the on the assumption that we're going to you know get a, a good amount of free cash in if for some reason we didn't get nearly that amount we'd have to i guess revisit it um i won't be actually making investments into opeb until january we will be certified i'm sure by then if we were off if something was off between you know how the figures here and the accountant and DOR, whoever's reviewing it there, um, we would have an opportunity to make an internal, in -house, an in-house adjustment and say, mm -hmm. Treasurer, don't put all that money into OPEB, we might have to make that cut in this one. So we'd have, we'd have a chance to get together and talk about um, uh, doing it differently if that seemed to be called for. So the total amount we're going to take from the stabilization fund, <clears throat> in lieu of having free cash available, is what around three hundred thousand. Yeah. So if you go on page, <coughs> the uh, two of these here. We're going to find two. All right. So the first uh, one is the expenditures summary. It goes to page three. Four, and then the revenue summary is pages one and two, and then the revenue expenditure summary, second from the back, right in the middle of the page, it says 309,404 for stabilization. And how much money is in the stabilization fund approximately? 1.9. 
million? Yeah. So, yeah, that doesn't seem like it's going to put the fund at risk. Right. Two million is the baseline, our, our objective. So it's like the 15%. Select board, percent, the select board has always wanted to have $2 million in there. Mm -hmm. We've been able to recoup. Um, you know, there are months where it makes quite a bit of money, another month it might be a loss. It's just one of those like, accounts. But um, we've come <coughs> up probably forty fifty. $40,000. Yeah, it's, it's... So worst case it's, scenario, even if it doesn't get paid back, it's 15% of the stabilization fund. It's not enough to make a huge difference one way. I mean, a make or break difference. Wow. Yeah, so best management practices says you should have 5% of your operating revenues in stabilization. We're at a, above 10% at this point. So, so we'll, you know... It's look from the way the Department of Revenue looks at us, we're, we're doing much better than the industry standard. Uh, our our policy is that it should be ten percent or higher. Well, I can support this action. I have a question: Does um, <clears throat> does it affect our? I know we just went to a lot of trouble to raise our credit rating, you know, and we succeeded mm -hmm. at doing that because of all of your efforts and your forward thinking. But I wonder if putting it in OPEB is actually a safer bet from that perspective as well. You know, maintaining a, and safeguarding our... Well, we, we know that having the OPEB plan and sticking with the plan was a larger factor mm -hmm. for them than we even anticipated going into the review. Um, I mean, I didn't expect that kind of reaction mm. from them, but we have gotten the feedback that that was big. Part of it is um, having a, pan a plan is very important, having a plan that you can meet is important, and then actually following through on it. Mm -hmm. So that, I would say, given uh, the where is it more important to have it, I, because of this have a plan and stick to it, I would rather, I, I think that that's important too. And we still have another $8 million to borrow in our um, in our next round of bonds mm -hmm. for to complete the buildings. So I, I you know, yeah, what so, do you think? So we did talk to our financial advisor, David Eisenthal, about, okay, so we said it's shaping up that we may have to do a little bit of, um, use of free cash and the uh, rather we're having trouble uh, certifying free cash is that going to be a problem and he shared some stories of the other towns where they were having similar procedural problems and it didn't affect their tax rate negatively uh, their bond rate negatively so i think given that we just got the AAA and that we're not likely to be reviewed by uh, S and P for another few years. So long as we can put this money back to both buckets, I think we're going to be okay. And I, and I think honestly, when it comes to how you react to um, how you react to the issue that we found before us at this point, <laughs> not not having it, um, that we're not slashing budgets, we're not we're not panicking, and we're actually we we're we're man it's being managed. It's being mm -hmm. it's being managed. Okay. All right. That isn't the way we plan to do it. Uh, this is still a good budget. Um, and uh, we do have the cushion there. And that was part of the rating too, is that we do have something to fall back on when we need it. And it's still important that we keep it. I just I just think that the the way we go through with it and add to that the plan that we would then move potentially, hopefully, move into a budgeting um, plan that would include full funding out of the cash and the revenue that we have on hand when we're voting that budget in in the first place, mm -hmm. I think would reflect well on our, um, on our financial strategies. Yeah. So it's a leap. Um, we, when we get this free cash certified, it's going to, we think it's going to be north of $750,000. But by maximizing the local receipts, it means we're going to be not generating a whole lot of free cash in the future. So we've got to look at that certified free cash as being two years worth of free cash. And we need to 
we need to increase our revenues in the future and control spending. So, um, wait, I don't understand. So, why is free cash going to go down in the future? If we maximize our local receipts, the difference between what we say we're going to bring in and what we actually bring in generates oh. free cash. I see. If we ramp that all the way up to 11, right. um, then we, uh, we're not going to be, that, that margin is going to be that much smaller. So why are we doing that? In well, order to make the budget work. Matt, oh. <laughs> but, but, it's, but it's not that we have been artificially not maximizing them. We have actually had some changes in our revenues since the annual town meeting in the spring that we don't re usually re recoup the benefit of that until it's certified the next year, but because we're happening. still at this stage when we know what's coming, such as what is it this uh, this quarter we had thirty uh, thirty forty thousand dollar jump in the uh, quarterly payment on the well, hotel. uh, hotel, hotels, yeah. um, and so now, hmm, so in another year we might say, oh that's great, and that will show up in next year's free cash. This year we're going. Well then, let's increase our anticipated revenue by that much because that looks like that we're going to be making more money there. We and the uh, the uh, savings in the uh, ambulance is another yeah. So un exactly, is, is that where you were putting? I was going to ask about the the ambulance, like the one that we're talking about most recent, where we're going to get back all the money. This right. right. So today, that is just today. Right. We got a check for two hundred and eleven thousand dollars. Okay. There's an additional forty-five thousand that needs to come in, right. but that'll come in. So they are we are getting an ambulance service for free, basically. Sir, so how did we reflect that in our? Where did that? Where, where did that revenue go? That I mean, revenue is in. If you go to page. Revenue two, revenue summary two. Page two? Oh, you're talking the last page? Oh, you're talking the last page? Revenue two. Oh, no, I don't know what it is. So the third page one. from the back. Okay, so page one. Yeah. Let's talk about the numbering <laughs> system. <laughs> <laughs> so the numbers are in the bottom okay. of the page. Okay. Expenditures one through four, revenues one through two. You go to revenue page two, and right about the middle of the page, you'll see two hundred and eleven thousand dollars. That's ambulance oh, yeah, yeah. rebate. Mm -hmm. Now we still have the full cost of the ambulance service in the budget. Okay. But it, it was in the budget in the spring, and it's still there now. But in the spring, we didn't know that the revenue that we we're also going to be on. Able to offset it with the revenue. Yes, so and so we're getting another forty-five thousand from the ambulance company, but we don't think it will come in time for us to use for the tax rate. But we will get it then and we'll turn it into free cash. Okay. So that forty will turn into free cash, but this the two eleven is what you're going to be using as part of just like when you're increasing the make the meals. Yeah. You're using that now. Yeah. But let's say our revenue is seeing a big bump now, but it's not going to continue to bump up. Um, if we anticipate more revenue, if free cash goes down, we would be able to take more money from the revenue so we don't need as much from free cash. In the it's the same dollars. Yeah. We're just calling it a different thing. Yeah. But, we, but there's going to be some change in the way we look at the revenue. Uh -huh. Just to know to not anticipate as much free Right, but if um, I think one of the things that this budget supports is more administrative staff to the um, to the departments that generate revenue. So board of health, we, need, we can cover more of the inspections that way. That'll generate more revenue. Fire department, same deal. Uh, the transition in the uh, building inspector's Inspections. office that will generate more money there. Um, yeah. And the degree to which we can free people from having to work on a special town meeting means that they can think strategically about saving money, 
and generating more revenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do we, are we looking for a, a motion to, so I, I don't know exactly how to word it, but if it's appropriate, I can make a motion to do this that we spoke sure. about. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you what I would like. Yeah. I would like to uh, the commitment to use stabilization and sewer impact fees on the condition that we replenish both those funds. To balance this budget. On the understanding, because if we, we can't actually condition, or they can in their vote, but in town meeting we can't make it conditional. Right. Okay. Right. But or their, or the, the attention, mm -hmm. the attention, very strong. Yeah. Attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, what he said, I would move to do that. All right. <laughs> All right. What do you think, Amy? I would, uh, you, you know, you. I, I'm a little bit hesitant, but, you know, I, I know it's just a numbers thing, and as long as our intention is, is, is as strong as it can be <laughs> to give it back, then I'm okay with it, because it's really just a play with numbers. You know, it's just, it's, I mean, it's that's what it's there for, really. Stabilization's there for when we need it. Stabilize us. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, but we can't just spend it. It's, it's, we have to use it when we need it, and then we have to put it, Absolutely. Put it back. Absolutely. By not putting it back, if we were not to put it back, that means that you're using a capital account to fund a budget. Right. And that, we will, uh, one problem will lead to another when mm -hmm. you start to do that, because you mm -hmm. raise the expectations of the budget, because everything that you fund in a budget will cost that much more the next year, and we won't be able to keep up. With it. Sure. So that would be a really, um, be really bad idea not to, uh, right. to, to redirect our capital for budgeting purposes as a matter of policy, but to, to equalize things or stabilize between now and I like that word now stabilization, <laughs> yeah. but, but to get us from here till spring, mm -hmm. and then with when like I so said we have opportunities to look at the free cash and go oof something was really off, we misjudged something, we'll have time, we'll be back around the table and say, all right, what are we going to, you know, how are we going to do this be before I actually start putting money into the OPEC, we'll have a chance to sure. talk about it again, or the free cash will come in in a few weeks and it will get out to you and it will be you know, as expected and we'll be right on course. Okay. So I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. I Thank know you. that this is unwelcome news, and I know that uh, this, is, this is not the way that I had hoped things would unfold, but I think there's a good opportunity here that we can do something good for the town in the long range. I'm curious. <clears throat> there must be other towns that have this problem with getting their numbers certified, mm -hmm. you know, and how, how are we, it seems a little unreasonable for the state to expect us to be able to do this properly when they're not sort of, you know, when they're taking so long to certify. Yeah, the holdup is not with the state, so that's, we can't, we can't blame them yet. Mm -hmm. um, they do need, they need some time in order to turn the numbers around and get the approvals from their bosses, but um, right now this is an internal issue that we need to resolve. So, uh, the, who certifies the numbers? The Department of Revenue. Oh. But they need to have, <laughs> so, they, they, the they don't have anything to certify until you give it to them. We haven't given it to them. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. So, there are towns that are in desperate trouble that haven't certified free cash for years, mm -hmm. haven't had audits for years, have not worked on really balancing their budget for a very long time. We're nowhere near that kind of territory. Um, and, you know, the Department of Revenue will want to work with us in order to prevent us from going into that kind of crowd. And a few weeks one way or another really wouldn't make a difference except for the fact that we go into special town meeting to balance our spring budget yeah. so it really is you know maybe in the long run we'll look back and say this 
it's a good thing that happened to us because if we now keep up and when we if we were able to balance our budget in the spring with money that we already have in hand or reasonably and uh, projected revenues it will be better it will be better planning for us mm -hmm. and yeah. um, you know even even you the use of the finance committee if you were just doing that one meeting and you're doing the annual meeting then we have you back in the fall to do other things <laughs> You know, a different kind of mm -hmm. planning because we spent all the time in the budget in the spring, and here we are mm -hmm. with the budget again. And, yeah. and um, done, there yeah. might be a uh, more interesting role for the finance <laughs> committee during the rest yeah. of the year. One of the things that not having the special town meeting, I could see, but I, maybe there's a way around it, is the use of the CPA money because mm -hmm. that is something that they really we have several articles go on every single meeting. So it would be nice not to have to make someone wait a whole year if they like they miss the deadline. They don't have to wait a whole year. They could try it, and so they do it right now in another six months. They get another shot at it. So I don't know how that would work, but it, it you know if because all C, using any type of CPA money has to be approved by town meeting, right? There's no way around that. Okay, um, and I and I think you're right. I think it's, that's that's. Yeah. We need for the discussion on this and on the idea of having the second town meeting. If we part one is let's not use the special because we have to balance the budget, but we can have special town meetings at other times as we need it. Yeah, we might. It, it doesn't have to be in October. We could have one. Um, uh, Dan was suggesting today that if we wanted to do capital in the fall, we could actually do it in September and take care of it and not getting into the time of year when he's trying to set the tax rate and other things um, because it wouldn't have anything to do with our certified free cash. It would just have to do with how do we want to spend uh, in, with capital. I think it's hard. We haven't tried it yet, but what well, we have tried to get um, all the capital needs addressed in one meeting mm -hmm. a year. Yeah. When did that happen? few years back, I can't remember, yeah. they all blend together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just get a system going and then you change DPW directors and they have different ideas of the equipment, we need this, we don't need that, and uh, uh, you know, so mm -hmm. sometimes you need to address things mid-year, but I think that is a separate issue with the, with the capital and that would certainly include the CPA, and I'm sure that there's things that come up for use of the, the um, you know, the I know, time that we had to buy the land. And, and that's fine, but yeah. I think, you know, yes, you, you just have to plan ahead, and I think planning ahead is, is fine, try. you know. I mean, CPA, if you really need the money, you just have to plan ahead. Yeah. I mean, maybe you have still have special meetings and you get it more organized where you don't wait to the last minute. We can, we can have it better prepared. Mm -hmm. um, midway through, you have a midway checkpoint or something. I don't know. Yeah. But um, I, and I mentioned to David, one of the other things I mentioned is that if we talk about one meeting a year, which is fine and great, I think, mm -hmm. can we talk about when the election is? Um, the pros and the cons of having the election before the town meeting versus having the election after the town meeting. You would have to, it would be a change in bylaw, but that would be something that could possibly be discussed or go, go on the warrant for the next town meeting is if that is something that we are interested in possibly doing. One of the pluses, the reason why I see it being a plus to have it after the town meeting, well, if you are going to... To have um, the election after the town meeting? Yes. Yeah. If you are going to do capital and you have any type of debt exclusion, you have to have the, you usually have the election after the town meeting votes, mm -hmm. yes, we want it. Then you have the uh, then you have the ballot vote. If you have the election for you know the people on the select board first, to, you know, and then you have the town meeting, then you have to have another ballot vote for the debt exclusion. Right. Awesome. Uh, so if right. we just move this one to the back, then you just have to have the one. You uh, don't have to have two. The other thing is. We're elected, we have people that are staying, right, the, 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 say the select board that we have now, and they're working this whole year, and they're working and working, and right before the annual town meeting, we vote, and some people leave, and we get new people, and then they have a town meeting, and they're voting on, you know. That's it's, a, it's a great point, yeah. So, 
you know, I'm thinking, you know, you finish the town meeting and then you have the new people come on board or the old people leave. So how would we get this idea further? It would be something that uh, David Pirates discussed with the select board. The select board would have to then put talk about putting it on the warrant. They yeah, would discuss it. Bylaw change. Bylaw mm, change. Bylaw. We'd have to write it the bylaw. Or any one of us could go as a private citizen and stand up at a select board meeting and say it. No, you could always put things on the on uh, on a warrant by petition, but I don't think that's a great idea. Sometimes I, I think well, I, think, and I think something like that. Yeah. I think you're talking about going to the select board and just saying during public oh. comment that yeah. oh, hey, this would like be a great it. idea. Yeah. Change change the direction of the train. Yeah. Yeah. Very good point. Well, I looked at the, um, there, we have a book on all the different towns and when they have, well, in Massachusetts, every <coughs> town, and it shows the town when their meeting is, their annual meeting, and when their election is. Majority, I'd say the majority of them have it after. Some have it, really? some have mm. it um, during the same that day. Right. Mm -hmm. Some of the smaller ones, a lot, you know, there's been a good handful of them that have it the same day. And there is a small amount that have it the day before. I mean, not the day before, but be prior to. Mm -hmm. but, but that wouldn't take care of the ballot override um, election issue that you're talking about, yeah. too. We'll never have those again, though. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not after the ones we just had. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Meats, they just keep growing. <laughs> what can we oh, say? That's, okay. that's all I had. Uh, we're going to be meeting tomorrow to talk about the accounting services. Um, the financial management yes. team will be part of that. And then we'll talk about this at that meeting and then we'll talk with the select board about, about this proposal. And I took the liberty of posting you for 6 o'clock on Thursday the 7th, mm -hmm. which is just before <coughs> now, before town meeting. Okay. Uh, one of you were not going to be there at town meeting, I think. Okay, I'm not going to be there. I'll um, be in Costa Rica. Okay, I should be there. we got to move town meeting to Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> Skype what you in. wish for. <laughs> Get that suntan lotion going. Yeah. 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 <laughs> My time. So it's, so it's no big deal that we don't have a quorum, I'm guessing then, huh? Well, if you have two people, you'll have quorum. Mm. Really? No, it's not a five, five member, two vacancies. Um, two people show up, this is... Are you allowed to, to remove the vacancies from the equation? I, I didn't think you could. Oh. On the state level, you can't anymore. I know, because I'm on the state board for the massage there. All right, so... That's what town council told me. I'll tell, tell oh. check with them. Okay. Well, we've, we've gone into the town meeting before with, with just one finance committee member or one or two finance committee members. That's happened. Okay. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. Okay. As, I, long, as, a, as long as they've taken all the votes that they need to take. Right, right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, well, we're still talking. I mean, I happen to... Um, watch one of the meetings and we talked about the Russell School and I thought that was fabulous that you guys were yeah. gonna go on that committee meeting. Yeah. I did have one question though. We talked in that meeting it was talked about that you were gonna fund that committee with twenty five thousand. But where is that money coming from? There's a CPA article for that very purpose and I think it's twenty three thousand and I thought that was the twenty one thousand dollars and ten thousand of that was gonna go towards a plan. Yeah, that would be that would be the funding source for it, that article. So does that mean that? that so oh, I made it made us. I I'm sorry. I thought it's in in this meeting. I thought you were doing twenty five thousand from somewhere to fund that plus ten thousand from that article for the plan. 
No, I might have been confused a little bit about the exact number, but it would have been that article for that building. And it's just for the plan. Yeah. Right. So that committee will have some money to do some actual uh, study work? Right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't so, even realize that. Okay, so yeah. that's a CPA article you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Right. And there's a historic preservation study done on that building already. Right. And I'll make sure you all have a copy of that. Okay. Um, so it's it's about ten years old at this point. Oh, I thought there was something new recently done because the number new numbers were just released. Estimates. Yeah, there are two there are two building studies. There's the what we call the old Mohawk study, which is a historic preservation study of Russell School Town Hall Library. And then there was the DRA report, which is seven buildings. Um, and so both of those are available to you. I look forward to that. That'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. So some of the questions and, and for that committee I would have, like, um, what, what would we have for the purpose of that, you know, or are you, would we look at as a town maybe just trying to just fund it enough to save the building and not make a purpose, just enough money, you know, and how much money would we need just to save the building to keep it so it's not falling down and we can preserve it until we end up having a purpose for it, <clears throat> you know, and I think also they, the, that committee might be assigned to thinking of possibly what purposes could you have about leasing it to other places or mm -hmm. doing something like that or having an agreement with somewhere else, which would be good. So towns could be in the business of renting space out to private businesses and then they have another, you know, another fund coming in. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll have to have a conversation about the implications for borrowing. Um, hmm. But yes, so City of Worcester is a good example where they've uh, lured the Paw Sox away from Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Um, they, hmm. By public money, they've created a, a stadium and set of businesses, and then that'll be leased out by a to a uh, commercial developer who will then handle all the management. But it will be town property privately managed uh, for the Paw Sox. Okay. The other thing I've seen, and someone mentioned it to me, just since you're on the committee, I just throw it out there. Someone said, wouldn't it be a fabulous place for a welcome center? Because it's in the center of some, and I don't know kind of what you would put it necessarily in a big welcome center, but I don't necessarily know if we have really any in West, too many in Western Mass, you know, and we're like a yeah. big center, so that might be something pretty, yeah. and maybe you get a different funnel and um, uh, uh, chamber of commerce people. Mm -hmm. Is it the town kind of desperately in need of office space? Or? It can be multi-purpose. Right? Yeah, yeah. multi-purpose. Yeah. yeah. So we've crammed everybody into Town Hall uh, and the, the Most Holy Redeemer while this construction project is going on. But we're going to pick up the good one when yeah. the library moves out, so that will actually be another oh. building. We don't know how that will be used. We're going to have to renovate that, make it ADA accessible to uh, the, lighting, uh, the wiring and the mm -hmm. ceiling. Mm -hmm. but uh, CPA funds CPA will that. take care of that. <laughs> so Hopefully. we're not talking yeah. elevator, are we? Um, I don't think we need an elevator, but we do need uh, uh, accessible bathrooms on the, on the main floor. I see. Yeah. Yeah. In there. <laughs> so we will have some big things come. I mean, it's great that we have a lot of revenue coming in, but there's some big things. I mean, we just did the buildings, but there's other big things coming up. I mean, that there renovation are. is huge. Yeah. The, the Russell School is going to be huge, and the DPW has plans mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, I am unclear about what the issue is on the overspending or the, you know, the, the other issue with the new um, senior center. There's a new retaining wall that needs to be built that wasn't originally planned for. Is that right? 
Yeah, yeah so um, I think that if I can remember the details correctly, the, um, the original plan was the tree, you've got the trees with the root ball, mm -hmm. and they were going to um, slope that ground uh, in order to um, make that, uh, that blend between the surface of the senior center and the surface of the neighboring property. And when they started working on those tree balls, it turned out that that was not going to uh, be good for the trees. And so they started talking about a retaining wall. They have not resolved that issue yet. Mm. That's something but that's is the fear, the fear is that water will rush off of there and the trees won't get enough? Well, what the, is, how is that not good for the Cut into the root balls and kill the trees. Oh. Yeah, oh. no, we don't want to do that. I see. The neighbors don't want us to do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Watch out for those guys with string trimmers, too. That's my advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they killed all my trees. So, how are we doing on budget with the senior center? That seemed, oh, good. That seems to be in good shape, right? Yeah. Now, that 100000 that was talked about in the paper, that's within the budget, my understanding, right? That's oh. correct. Okay. And how about the library? Are they on track or are they way over? They're on track right now. We just got a financial report just uh, yesterday or today. Uh, they're right on track. So. Okay. You know, tight, but it's on track. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tight, but so far so good. And what made it tight? What, what, what was it that happened that, that really put them over? Was it this issue that happened in between, what is it, the water main or something in front of the library, that issue? No, that, that, that has not been, that's been dealt with and it's okay. not been dealt with. Uh, library money. Oh, okay. The main issue is that the bids came in higher than expected. Oh. So that project was, from the be from the beginning, was tight on budget. But they have a contingency budget, and they're right now operating very well within their within their parameters. We have a lot more building to get through. Um, I see a lot of change orders, which surprises me sometimes. I expect it with an old building that you take down things you go, oh, what did I find here? But with a new building, I'm surprised that we have so many change orders. Yeah, yeah. That's something that the select board and the OPM are actively talking okay. through right now. There were change orders. A lot of them were associated with surprises that were buried in the ground. Oh. So the asbestos and um, infrastructure such as sewer pipes that had been abandoned and were no longer known and you excavate and you find that. So there was a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and the other change orders have to do with um, issues that came up because of structural engineering. And that's where the main arm wrestling with the select board is going on, is that the select board not inclined to pay for somebody else's mistake mm -hmm. on a building. Yeah. So they're still working on that one. So whose mistake is that? Well, uh, uh, the position of the town is that it was the structural engineer, the mm -hmm. people who uh, should have known better. Mm -hmm. Is that part of the contracting company? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the contracting company's position? Why is that not their fault? Um, I can't recall. The, I can't recall. So they're working on the remedy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're working on the remedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Project is still within budget. How about the fire substation? Is that within budget? Still within budget and coming along. We had, you were at the uh, sure. groundbreaking. Yeah. I just didn't know where they were with the money. Yeah. You know, if everything looks like it's within budget. Yeah. Okay. I haven't heard any change orders on that one. I, I well, at least I haven't noticed. Mm -hmm. I don't. Wait, I don't watch all the change. meetings. Oh, I'm meeting. Sometimes, yeah. Missed you guys at the uh, uh, the public forum. Oh, the public forum. Yeah. yeah. What, what the interesting part that sounds like it's going to be for a town meeting is going to be more of the, not our budget, but more of the um, uh, so. zoning, yeah. zoning uh, for mm -hmm. the um, Don Dion's property that is... Oh, there's some angry people. Huh? Well, uh, abutters, I think. That are the abutters, excited. yeah, they lost their open space if you could call it their open space. 
Uh, so I heard something. Are we talking, what are we talking about that yes. uh, development that's going on up yeah. the middle street? So you're talking about the people that live on Newton Lane mm -hmm. are the uh, abutters that are. And, and are they are they are they complaining? Are they suing? Are they? Do we, this is for development that hasn't happened. No, this is a no, new one. Think. Not not the. But I mean to stop a new development. Yes, I stop a new development. Yeah, yes. yeah. I think they right now they want to. It's not even sold as because they just looking to rezone it so that they can sell yeah. it to make a development. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is this it's vote. The yeah. So this vote is just about the zoning. Uh -huh. So you know what? I thought that Edwin brought up this great comment on that meeting was about the sewer. I wondered how did that get resolved. Is that sewer going to be able to pick up all those extra houses? It should. So the standard of um, if you were to build a septic system for each house, you would use the calculation of 110 gallons per day per bedroom. When you're talking about millions of gallons per day going through the sewer treatment plant, that addition of, of those houses is not going to make that big of a deal. Okay. Only because we were getting close to capacity, I thought. Yeah, we do, we do have a capacity issue now. Mm. We've had a very wet year, um, and that may, may be contributing to it. And we do have a study to expand. The, mm. We're asking money for a study to expand the sewer treatment plant. Um, but those houses shouldn't significantly increase the capacity. Okay. Mm. Yeah, okay. I thought that was a, you know, after we're talking about a study grant, I thought that was a very fair question to ask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, yeah, I don't really mm -hmm. know either way how it could. Yeah, it it's interesting. Yeah. Well, just to be clear, when we're talking about capacity, there's the threshold is 80%. When you reach 80% of your capacity, then you haven't hit the maximum, but you do attract the interest of the Department of Environmental Protection who want, will work with you to come up with a solution for either increasing capacity or reducing flows. So we're not at 100%. Are we at 80%? We're getting close to 80%, but we're not there yet. Mm. I imagine all those hotels uh, really contribute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're doing another hotel, or redoing the hotel. Redoing one, yeah. Right? Yeah, the road right in. So that will add. Yeah. Like that, yeah. yeah, I don't think we have any wet industries coming in. We're not getting like a brewery. No, or no car wash. Like no <laughs> car wash, no brewery, <laughs> no pickle plant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> think things that really mess up sewer treatment plants. Mm. Okay. Is there anything else? That we want I to think do? we've done an enormously good work tonight. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for all of your efforts. When do you plan to finish going over this with select board? Uh, they're meeting on the sixth. So. I'll, I'll so they're just meeting right before again. The, the oh no, the day before. Wednesday. Wednesday. The day before. So the day before you're going to ask them to do similar a vote, right? And then with their promise to return it, right? And then are you going to discuss the the one meeting at that point too? Yes. Okay. Okay, great. And I'll have something formal written up. We just didn't have enough time today after meeting and sort of getting getting things worked out and we're still crunching numbers and making sure that we have accurate figures. So, but I'll write something up for the select board. Okay. I've already, I have talked to the chair about this, so we have his support right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to be just bringing it on then? No. <laughs> I don't watch it on TV. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work so hard. <laughs> Okay, so All right. I'd like to call the meeting to adjourn then. Thank you so All much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.